Hello fellow mountaineering community. Thanks for uh, checking out this video on uh, the gear that you require to climb Mount Fuji in the winter. Uh, now I'm not a professional mountaineer. I uh, do that a lot in my spare time. You can check out my other videos to see what I've climbed before. I'm doing this video maybe to help you guys on putting together your own gear list when you go climbing something non-technical in winter and extreme cold. So the biggest challenge about climbing Mount Fuji in February is probably the weather. Um, first of all, it's not obvious that I'm going to get sun, but the most challenging part is I will have a lot of wind, uh, up to 100 kilometers per hour winds, and there will be some extreme cold, especially due to the wind chill. So I've, um, I put together this video to show you what I'm bringing along. Again, this is not a technical climb, uh, but it's challenging. And I don't want to end up like my friend Dean, who climbed Aconcagua in 2016, uh, sorry, 2012. Um, so uh, let's get going. Let me show you what gear I'm using, and I will be providing some comments. So here is all the gear, and don't worry, it looks like a big mess right now, but I'm going to go step by step to show you a little bit what I'm using. So first of all, I'd like to show you what I'll be wearing. So I'll be leaving Tokyo with these clothes and likely make it to uh, the first day to camp uh, with these clothes. So again, um, quick reminder, you it's not a huge climb. You probably only need less than 48 hours to climb Mount Fuji. So the plan is leave Tokyo very early in the morning, uh, get to the city of Fuji Yoshida probably around 10ish and start hiking around 11. That leaves me six hours to get as high as possible. I'm hoping to be able to sleep right about 3,000 meters and just have about have 750 meters to climb the next morning. I'd like to see the sunrise. So uh, what I'll be using leaving Tokyo. Uh, this is a base layer from Arcturix. Um, it's, it's pretty warm. It's, as you can see, long sleeve. It's not very thick and it's not like power stretch. I really like power stretch because it keeps you warm. However, I don't expect it to be extremely cold, especially it'll be quite, you know, it'll be all elevation gain the first day. I'll be probably warm, so I don't want to get too hot. So, um, what I really like about this piece is that, first of all, it's got an integrated hoodie. So uh, what I like about hoodies is that it adds heat or removes heat quite quickly. You just have to remove or add your hoodie on. And this will actually be very good for the summit day where I'm expecting the coldest temperatures. And in this pocket, I'm hoping to put anything that requires a battery so I can keep my batteries warm and uh, avoid them from draining once I'm at the summit. So if I will have some a few summit shots, uh, I can still, I'll pull out the battery and put it into my camera. This is another piece by Arcturix. Um, this is what we call uh, the Atom Pullover, Atom LT Pullover. So Arcturix sold tons of Atom LT hoodies, uh, which is kind of a small jacket. It's pretty much the same weight to ratio and the same level of warmth. Um, I got this on sale and that's why I probably bought it. I usually don't buy base layers that don't come with a hoodie um, because as I said, hoodies are very practical. But I have so much to put on my head during this trip that I said this is a really good compromise. If I get too hot, this will easily roll up in my backpack. So it's a really good option. And this will be the jacket. So I don't think it's the best jacket to do the climb. I would rather go with a two or three layer soft shell with no Primaloft integrated to it. Although um, Primaloft will keep me warm, but I'm using this jacket because I'm spending a week in Tokyo. I didn't want to bring too many jackets. I, this is a good jacket that's going to be all around. Uh, it is more an urban outdoorsy jacket in the sense that it's kind of the jacket you wear to show that you like to go outdoors. I've used it in extreme temperature, it works extremely well. As you can see, the zip is waterproof, which obviously will be windproof. Uh, the pockets are also windproof, waterproof, and it comes with a decent hoodie. And as I said, it is Primaloft, so it's fairly thick. Um, it will keep me warm in most situations. I'm scared that at the beginning I might get a little bit too warm. Uh, and then for the, the bottom, so I'll be wearing a nice breaker wool underwear that keeps me warm um, for the two days. And then this is a uh, full uh, Alpha SV Arcturix bib, the older version, uh, which protects you really well against the wind. Again, wind and cold will be the biggest challenges on this on this climb. And then if you go down, 
what I will put, be wearing on my feet. I will be wearing the Phantom Guide by Scarpa. I've used them at almost 6,000 meters high. These are extremely good on snow. And I'm bringing some crampons on those. These are very standard crampons. I think they're the G10. Um, they're, you know, as I said, it's not a technical climb, but crampons are pretty much a good option on this, uh, on this in winter, especially if I, I meet ice. And then I'll be wearing socks. Um, and the socks I'll be wearing are these full uh, wool socks. I might add another pair of socks under them for summer, summer day, which is those socks that you can see the five toes. So I like to wear the combination of these heavy wool socks with the five toes that are also wool. It gives me a lot of warmth. On my hands, what I'll be wearing is, I got these Arcturix ski gloves. Well, I don't think will be enough. So I'm adding some North Face liners, which again, I'm not sure 100% they're enough. So I am taking, just in case, another pair of Arcturix liners, uh, wool liners I bought. Um, they're 100% wool, I'm hoping they keep me warm. And I got an extra pair of mitts from the brand Combi. So if you guys know Combi, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I've actually never used this brand before, but the they were mitts that were on sale, and mitts is probably the best option. Extreme cold. Some more Arctic. This is uh, this is kind of my uh, ski touring, mountaineering toque. Um, it keeps you fairly warm, uh, especially you know it's more over the year, and this is not a very thick fabric on the top. But I do like it, I do like the fit, and uh, I know I never, never overheat in them, and it goes really well on your, your head. It doesn't move around, and it's not itchy. And when it gets, it's gonna get really cold, I have this Arcturic Power Stretch Balaclava. Uh, it's the Row Balaclava, which keeps me extremely warm, and I really, really enjoy that. So, uh, in terms of gear, uh, hard goods. I'll be bringing two uh, black diamond poles um, because I do expect the backpack to be fairly heavy. Uh, well, fairly heavy, about 15 kilos, so probably no more than 30 pounds. I, I'm buying all the food, of course, in Japan, and I am expecting to, to eat ramen, so that shouldn't add too much weight. But it's good to have poles, especially if you're going to be on icy sections. If I do go in some very icy sections, um, I will have my ultralight camp ice axe, which uh, will allow me to self-arrest if anything happens. Again, I, I really don't want to self-arrest, especially since I'm, I'll be climbing solo. Um, but I've looked at a lot of videos and I haven't seen anything crazy steep and I haven't read anybody having any issues. Again, challenges, it's not technicality, it's weather, wind plus cold. Um, I have my uh, GPS here. I, I know it's, an, it's the Oregon 300. I've been using this GPS for many years, it's a tactile. Um, in the case, it actually is protected quite well against the cold. I will not be putting in lithium batteries, but you know, standard batteries uh, with an extra pair. That should stay, you know, that should work for at least 40 hours with an extra pair. I am putting tracks that I've done on Google Earth based on other climbers' tracks and based on what I saw on the satellite images. Uh, these are for the, these are snow pickets for the tent. Um, now it's, the good thing about Mount Fuji is there's a lot of houses on the way up. So uh, what other climbers have done and what my intention is to do is to put the tent between uh, a house and basically the mountain. So usually there's a gap that allows you to be fairly protected from the wind. Again, I'm not having any, you know, this is my expectation, but I am prepared for something different. If there is a lot of wind, the night I am on Mount Fuji, I likely will not set up my tent and use the the sheet as a as a tarp and roll myself around it. Uh, simply because if there's too much of a high wind, my my tent will simply break. This is the the tent I'm using is a carbon. Uh, I think it's called carbon carbon reflex two. So it's a two percent tent. It's one of the lightest. 2% tents you can get and it's carbon reflex because the poles are are made in carbon which is actually not super strong so this is definitely not the best option and I don't really recommend this tent for this climb I am taking a bit of a risk with this tent I'm really hoping to find a good shelter while on the mountain and again if I don't find the shelter I need I will using it, be using it just as a tarp and roll myself against it because I don't want the, the tent to smash uh, smash on uh, 
during during my sleep and I will probably have a shitty sleep so thank God it's only uh, 24 I'm expecting to be 30 hours on the mound uh, what else here's some uh, video equipment so I'm, I'll be using the camera that I'm uh, filming this this uh, video with right now which is the RX100 Mark III which is a fantastic camera I really enjoy using it uh, I'll be using a selfie stick from GoPro or or GoPro, a company that does GoPro accessories. Uh, this I've used it for underwater filming. Now I'll be doing mountaineering filming. I really enjoy it. Uh, I'll be using um, an, um, an iPhone case. And this is a GoPro Hero that I um, that I really, it's a really good deal. You can get it for 180 bucks in Canada. It's really cheap. And the footage is actually really amazing. And they do really well in high altitude. Uh, this is just in case of emergency. If I have a really cool night, I'll be using these uh, these heat packs. Um, I'm bringing goggles that um, mostly for high winds. If there was no high winds, I would just use my Jobo sunglasses. Um, they're uh, they, these are meant to be to go about 3,000 meters, as they block the UVs that usually um, go that you see at above 3,000 meters. This is a water bottle. Uh, probably won't be drinking tons on the on the mountain. Might be uh, making myself some tea at night or uh, or in the morning. Uh, this actually protects pretty well the water bottle, but I do expect in minus 40. I, I don't know how it's going to work. Uh, I know I'll have to be putting some boiling water early in the morning to hope to get some liquid water by the time I end the summit. Um, this is my titanium spork. This is one of the lightest sporks you can find on the market. It's done by uh, Snow Peak. Uh, this is a foldable bowl. It's great for making your noodles. It's also great for your tea and coffee. Uh, this is an essential piece of the climb. It's called the MSR reactor. I think a lot of you guys are familiar with this guy. Uh, it's probably the most efficient winter stove you can find. Um, I'm getting a cartridge in Japan. I've ordered it on Amazon. It'll be delivered to uh, to my friend's house while I'm there. Uh, this actually can withstand really strong winds and this is probably one of the few reactors that can work in extremely strong winds. Again, don't forget to keep your cartridge warm if you want to be able to use it. Otherwise, it's likely that no fuel will burn and it's going to be completely useless. So sleep with your gas cartridge. Uh, what's in here? Some first aid kit. This is a strap. Uh, a lot of people who do ski touring knows that the strap. It's an essential strap. You know, in case of emergency, I got matches, whistle. Very important spot. It does spot does work great in Japan. Apparently, they do could have coverage over there. Uh, lighter. Another lighter. Some uh, sun sun block. Lip sun gloss extra batteries and um, and water filters I'll be I'll be melting my snow on Fuji so there won't be uh, any liquid water up there uh, and this other bag this is more like my hygienic stuff so some TP some uh, Petzl flashlight we will using in the morning this is extremely powerful flashlight uh, don't be cheap get new batteries for it when you go climbing uh, paper to burn just in case of emergency, other straps if needed, uh, a toothpaste, toothbrush, earplugs, and uh, a Leatherman tool, which is a bit heavy, but I do like it. It's, it's been very handy in, in certain emergency situations. Okay, let's continue. So that's a lot of stuff. So let's see what I'm going to be sleeping with. So this is a minus 20 sleeping bag. I don't think if I hit minus 25, it's definitely not going to be sufficient, but I am not sleeping with only that. So, uh, sorry, I won't unpack it, but it's in a compressed bag. And it's quite difficult to put it in there. But basically, it's a hybrid. It's got down and synthetic. Um, it, it's, it was a good price when I got it. It's extremely warm. Uh, the good thing is that uh, if you get two of those, you can actually combine them with somebody else. and you will never get cold, you'll very rarely get cold if you're uh, coming in a sleeping bag with somebody else because you, their warmth and your warmth together will make something very efficient and you could actually deal with extreme cold weathers uh, without even feeling uh, lower, the lower temperatures. 
Uh, this is also an essential piece. This is my air mattress. Um, most of you guys know that isolating yourself from the floor is extremely important. This is the Xtherm, so this is probably the warmest air mattress you can buy. Um, and I say air mattress, so I know there is some down air mattresses that may be slightly warmer than this, but this is extremely warm and this will definitely isolate me from the snow that I'll be sleeping on. So this is essential piece. Uh, these are down booties, um, something very popular here in British Columbia. Uh, you sleep with those, I can put my heat packs in them, I will really keep myself warm at night. Uh, you know, the feet easily get cold, so you definitely want to have something for your feet. Uh, you don't, you know, cold feet will keep you up at night. Uh, this is something I'll probably be wearing on summer day. It's the silver, and probably when I'm going to go to bed. This is the Silver Stream bib from Mech. I don't know if they still make them, but it's this power stretch uh, bib uh, that will definitely go under my uh, Gore-Tex bib, my Arcturus Gore-Tex bib, and that will keep you uh, that will keep you extremely warm. I've used it on Mount Orizaba in Mexico or in Ecuador at very high altitude. Never been cold. Uh, very efficient. And this is one of the most beautiful pieces I have in my gear list. It's the Vendre Sears jacket. They don't make this one anymore. They replace it with another model. It's 100% down. It's extremely warm. It's got a thick hoodie. Uh, it's it just it compresses super well. I do have some glove glove pockets here. Um, I love this piece of jacket. It looks great. I love the color, and it is warm. Uh, you know. Some of the piece I might be just wearing at the summit, but I might be wearing it during 3,000 meters. Again, depends on the conditions, but it's quickly accessible. And yeah, I just love this piece. It's extremely warm and, um, and it works really, really well. Um, I think uh, that's it. Maybe end with my backpack, what I'm going to put all my gear with. So this is the Nozone 55 from Arcturx. So that says it's a 55 liter. Um, it barely fits everything I need. Although it's gonna be full, the backpack is not more than 15 kilos, 30 pounds, because a lot of the stuff are gonna be, you know, lightweight gear. Uh, you know, you wanna privilege lightweight, especially when, you know, the faster you are on the mountain, the safer you are. You don't wanna stay in on the mountain when it's minus 30, minus 40 degrees. Oh, sorry, I just want to make a note that Celsius, not Fahrenheit, although minus 40 Fahrenheit is the same as minus 40 Celsius. Um, so I'll be using this backpack. I've used it on many trips. It, it works great. And there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to be on the other side of the backpack, such as my poles, my alley sacks, and my, um, my crampons. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave one in the comment, or you, I guess you can directly PM me. Uh, I've been climbing for almost 20 years now all around the world. Check out my other videos. Um, British Columbia is a beautiful place to discover mountaineering. I do recommend it. Uh, it's not the easiest place to mountaineer, but it's certainly one of the most beautiful and most isolated ones. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, doing Mount Fuji, good luck. And I hope to be able to post my Mount Fuji video uh, fairly soon if uh, this adventure happens.